welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we cover some of the latest in poultry nutrition research and industry tr- trends in approximately 10 minutes. I'm one of the co-hosts of the show, uh, Sam Rocho. I'm an associate professor of poultry nutrition at Auburn University. Uh, I formerly was at uh, the University of Arkansas and am joined by a former colleague uh, there, Dr. Casey Owens. Uh, Dr. Owens is an expert in meat quality uh, of poultry. Uh, she's been at uh, University of Arkansas for approximately 24 years uh, after being trained at, at Texas A&M. We did see, you know, some responses with, with the GA work. I don't know if you, that paper is recently published. If you want to talk about uh, some of the changes in quality uh, at the different, you know, levels of GAA that we were looking at. Sure. So we used, um, the, again, back to your mechanism is that, that the woody breast myopathies, some of the thought is that it's, uh, that appears because of um, vascularization issues um, in, as the bird is growing. And so there's intermittent blood flow and that cre- creates this um, degeneration of muscle fibers and this cascade of events. And so um, using GAA in the diet, um, some initial work has been done in, um, by the researchers, uh, Dr. Edgar Oviedo mm-hmm. did some work in that area as well. And so we followed up with some studies um, and we used a little bit higher level um, 0.06 and point. 12 percent um in the diet and what we saw in that research um was that as there was kind of a stair step um effect where as we increased that level of gaa some of the myopathies did decrease over time and it seemed like it was more effective at the highest level but there were intermediate effects at that 0.06 level versus the zero, obviously. And the positive thing about that particular study was that we didn't see um, drastic reductions in growth performance, if at all. Um, I'm trying to remember back from the paper itself uh, yeah, right. published over a year ago. But um, anyway, so it has some promising um It's promising in, in the use of reducing um, woody breast. Um, sure. Uh, if if people wanted to look up that uh, that paper was published in twenty three or twenty two, I know it's in Japper, right? Yeah, I think it was last year. Yeah, in, in Japper, if I remember correctly. <laughs> but I mean, I think the interesting thing is, you know, you've done a couple of projects around that. Uh, others, including uh, Dr. Oviedo, um, and there there have been other papers. So it, it seems to be some consistency in in those processes. So I think that's a that's a pretty neat response. So. Yeah, because I think in Dr. Um, Oviedo's uh, response is that in, in some conversations I've had with mm-hmm. him, he thought the higher levels would be necessary for uh, yep. to see that response. And so um, that was good. You know, in terms of um, looking at other nutritional um, interventions, I've said before that you don't want to really, really have a drastic reduction in growth rate or um the body weights and efficiency and so forth. Um, oftentimes, um, you can maybe get a reduction and maybe see those negative ad- things on performance, but um, it's you've got to have a significant enough reduction to make it worth the while too. And sometimes it takes a, a hurdle approach um, in in doing. It's not just one silver bullet. Um, but uh, so there's a lot of work out there in the nutritional area to look at different things. Um, but that's those are the GAA seemed to be promising. Yeah. As far as the, the issue at large, I know you interact with poultry producers a lot. You spend a lot of time in different plants and talking with plant managers and operators. I mean, where do you think we are as far as myopathies and where do you think, um, you know, maybe what is the next big thing that, that folks who focus on processing yield and quality are, are going to be thinking about? So um, I get asked that question a lot is if the incidence has decreased over the years. And um, I haven't been in a whole lot of plants relative to when I was in them before COVID. (laughs) I was in there quite a bit um, and got a lot of baseline um, data at that point. Um, And so we've probably seen some improvement overall um, in the processing plants. But with that, I will say that in our research trials, we can still readily get Mm -hmm. severe myopathies. Mm -hmm. So the propensity is still there. Um, And I know that the markets can sometimes 
um, dictate how what the market weight will be, or, you know, the processing age and, and things of that nature. And so if you back off on weights, you may see that decrease in myopathies in the plants. But um, plants have overall been very good at, um, well, listening to their customers and knowing what product mix their products are going into. And so if there is more of a high-end product where woody breast can really um, impact those things, they can have a more, a stronger, maybe diversion program where if you divert the most severe types of products um, into something that you chop and form, you're not going to see the effects as great. Um, And hopefully everybody that's listening to the podcast has a little bit of an understanding with myopathies are, is it really is a quality issue. There's a change in composition, a little bit more connective tissue associated with it, which gives some, um, eating quality issues. So, um, it's still good product. Um, but it can be challenging if you're in the, if you have more, the most severe can give you, um, some negative eating quality aspects to it. So, um, but they can sort in the plants, It can be sorted by hand, even um, if they have the labor to do so, and depending on, again, on their product mix. Uh, But hopefully we see improvements. Overall, I still think it is a challenge for the poultry industry because, and I said this at Poultry Science Association meetings last year and some conversations and some symposia that we had, is that, you know, we've got to look at it like, what if we didn't have this issue? We would have a lot more sellable, high-quality meat rather than having to worry about diverting product when we need to and so forth. Um, yeah. Or, hey, we're really going to have to push the birds. We're going to see an increase in the incidence. Why, you know, can we get to the root problem and and prevent some of that from occurring? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. No, it's a, it's an interesting uh, problem and it's kind of been a longstanding problem. And certainly there's no, you know, particularly nutritional uh, solution to the problem, but more of a comprehensive, both on the, the front end and the back end and dealing with it. So uh, we appreciate all the work that you have done in that area and will continue to do and, and always enjoyed uh, working on those projects with you. So, Oh, they're fun. I, I like the, that there's been a lot more, a lot more attention to meat quality in recent years, yeah. even though it's a, uh, not a necessarily a positive aspect, but at least it's on the minds of um, the industry and, and researchers to that point too, is that they're incorporating um, more meat quality um, assessments Um so if there are a lot of nutritional trials going on, mm-hmm. whether it's affecting myopathies or not, they may be incorporating that. And that's going to give us more information um, to the industry and scientific community as well. So, yeah, no, that, that's a really good point. It has, has brought the, the whole field to the, to the forefront. Sure. And so I, I know that I certainly thought about meat quality more uh, after learning about this uh, than, than before. So, yeah. Well, very good. I think that's uh, close to our time for today. Uh, thanks again uh, for your time. And uh, we really appreciate uh, the insight and, and look forward to uh, your continued work in this area. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me again. And it's always a pleasure to, to visit with you. And um, hopefully we'll get to continue to work together in the future. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Casey. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.